common one mark question in SBM, MF, MF exam. So yeah, this one is undefined or math error problem. So basically, only one idea you need to understand, which is the denominator can never be zero. If you not believe me, you can just take out your calculator. You're trying to type any number divided by zero. You actually, you will get math error in your calculator. So therefore, if you understand the idea of denominator cannot equal to zero, that means whenever the question always asks something like x cannot equal to k and asks you to find what is the k value here. So if you see the question like this, first thing you go to see is what is your denominator value? Just in case some students do not know what is denominator, denominator means uh, the bottom of the fraction. So if you have a over b as a fraction here, uh, this one we call it denominator. Okay, top we call numerator. Okay, just some ideas for you. So that means the denominator can never equal to zero. So therefore, when you see something like x cannot equal to k in your exam, what you need to do over here is, I will go to find my denominator. In this case, my denominator is 2x minus 1, right? So I will say, okay, 2x minus 1 cannot equal to 0. Then 2x cannot equal to 1. Then x cannot equal to 1 over 2. So 1 over 2 and k is in the same position, isn't it? So k will be 1 over 2. It's quite easy one. So, right. For modulus over here, because if you go higher level, you will learn about modulus quadratic graph. But over here, SPM, you only cover the linear graph. So the modulus linear graph, they confirm the shape already, always is the V shape. The shape already fixed. Okay, so you don't need to worry about what is the pattern the line will look like. The line will always look like V. And then on the uh, vertex of the V here, must always touch on the X axis. Alright, so this is something you always need to remember. First, you, you need to re remember is always the V shape. Second thing, the vertex always on the X axis. Alright, this is something you, you need to understand. If just in case the exam really will ask you to sketch, then normally they will give you a domain. Domain is something you see from here. Mean they want the graph is from negative A to B. They want this range only from negative A to B. So what you need to do is very easy. You draw a table and then you take the uh, the, low, the lowest value of the domain, which is negative A you inside here. And then the largest value of the domain, you put at the, at the fourth column. And then, and then you add zero for both. Okay, when you add the zero for X, you're actually finding the Y intercept. And then you add the zero at the fx, you are finding the x in the set. So normally this is all the value you need into uh, when you sketch a graph. That means if I do like this, I know my negative a, I know my negative a, and this one with my b value, and then this is my x in the set and my y in the set. So basically this is all the value you need. So you kind of can copy this kind of pattern of the table. So if you need to draw the table, take the lowest value, largest value, and add the zero on X and Y. That's all. So inverse function, this is, uh, actually I try many inverse function method. Yeah, X and Y always substitute here, substitute there. And I find this method actually quite easy. So I actually teach these methods to you. So the first thing is um, basically, what I want you to do is you change the fx. When you see the fx, you change into x. Or you see the gx, you change into x. You change, mean you see any function like g, f, or h, you straight away change it into the x. And then on the other side, on the other side, uh, whatever x you see, you just change it back to the y. Like this case, the 3x plus 2, right? You see the x here, right? Change it x into the y. Then you have something like this. Then the next thing is change, okay, change all the x here and then make y a subject. That means you move around until you left a single y. And then the fourth step is make the y equals to f inverse. Yeah, I guess this is the faster and easiest way to actually find a inverse function, but you need to practice in order to master it.